I have been a nerd my entire life. I'm a computer science professor, and I run technology for schools. Let's be honest for a second here. It comes with the territory. About five years ago, I saw a couple guys building a replica of R2-D2 from the movie Star Wars. I'm a huge Star Wars fan, <laughs> obviously, right? And I wanted to get into robotics, so I thought to myself, is this something I could do? Could I, could I build something like this? Well, I looked into it and found out that there are builders clubs for almost everything, including R2-D2. You know, I never thought in a million years that I would discover a different way of doing project-based learning in my classroom. This little droid here next to me took me two and a half years to build. And trust me when I tell you this, this was a journey of failure for me. I broke almost everything that you see here. <coughs> You're fine now. <laughs> luckily for R2, luckily for me, I never quit. The successes began to add, and before you know it, he was done. And I was so excited and proud to share him with literally everybody. Because through the process of building R2, I had gained a level of confidence I'd never had before. I had more critical thinking and problem-solving skills. You know, I was no longer scared to fail. It's, it's funny how things happen and how you just kind of stumble across ideas. I remember like it was yesterday, I'm in a meeting with my colleagues and we're talking about our internship program. And we wanted to build greater critical thinking skills. And then bam, like a flash of lightning, it hits me. If I could build a program that replicated the same experiences I had building R2-D2, then students would gain additional critical thinking and problem solving skills. But how could I get them to do this and what would I teach them? So first, I start with what to teach them. This had to be technical skills. This had to be programming, electronics, system operations, these big ticket items that I have in my classroom. Because I needed this to be an area I could assess them on. And I know that a lot of students care about their actual grade, so I needed this to be beyond just the letter grade. So then it occurred to me. I wanted to build R2-D2 because I love this guy. You, you don't have to laugh at me, because that's the truth. I love this robot, and that's what had to happen. The students had to love their project. It had to be theirs. It had to be a project that they owned. So early on, I decided that ownership and freedom of project selection was key to making all of this work. So about a year ago, we started this process. Did it work? Well, before we get into that, let me first introduce the robots we have on stage with us today. Let me uh, back up R2. So next R2, we have our Mars rover. This is a one-quarter scale uh, rover of the Curiosity rover from actual Mars. In front here, we have our little mouse droid, one of our Star Wars robots that runs around. Next to him, we have Puppo. Puppo is a original design carries textbooks in size, head lifts up, has a screen on it, those kind of pieces. And then on the stage here next to me on the couch sitting here is BB-8 and CB-23. Both these robots 3D printed and work by having a central motor in their very center connect to the side that rolls that sphere. There's a magnet in the very top of the area that keeps the head on as it rolls around. It's a fantastic piece of equipment. Well, I know, people like to know. So every robot here has a story of failures. And so I want to talk about a couple of those. The first one I'm going to talk about is the Mars rover up here. The Mars rover team had to figure out how to cut exact notches in steel. And they needed a lathe. So they decided they had to build their own rudimentary lathe using a drill, a dremel, and some ingenuity. And they made it happen. All of those type of successes moved the project forward because they had failed in 3D printing, design, programming, all those areas. But they were able to su successfully complete this and move it forward. The BBA team back here had spent eight months 3D printing this robot. And thanks to the help of the BBA Builders Club, this was one of the first BB-8s built in the state of Ohio. It was great. We got invited to news stations and conferences. And at our very first conference, the main motor blew up. 
I know, right? Uh, it was very stressful because the very next day, the lieutenant governor of Ohio wanted to see the robots. Well, I'm happy to say that we were able to successfully get the robot working and everything worked out fine. I was so proud of those students because that was a difficult thing to go through. So does this self-selected project-based learning make for more effective teaching, more engaged students? Well, I could tell you that the students' grades increased, and well, for the most part, they did. But for me, the main measure was the engagement. If a student had a project that was theirs, I mean, really theirs, they would show up. They'd be there morning, afternoon, weekend, working on their projects, failing, even through breaks and failures, they would keep coming back, learning, learning all the skills we had talked about earlier. You know, I've been told that this is a sneaky way to educate students because it's not about the robots. It's not about you. It's about the students being passionate about their projects and the teaching being effective. For me, it's robots. For an English student, maybe they are writing a, a book instead of just writing a paper. For a music student, maybe they're composing an album instead of just practicing their instrument. For a political science student, maybe they're actually working on a campaign instead of just reading about the processes. Education can provide real ownership by having students complete processes and projects they actually want to complete. At the same time, teaching them the valuable skills that are necessary for their craft. When education works like that, we not only have students that loved what they did in their classroom, but are more successful in life. <laughs>